I don't know what this question is doing all the way at number 17. I mean, maybe it's just that trigonometry by itself is a very, very hard topic for lots of people, but this is about as easy of a trigonometry question as you can get. It's it's just knowing so ka toa right? So katoa. Let's make sure my O's and my A's look different, right? Which reminds us of what all of these different things are, right? So cosine, what we're asked for, is the ka part, right? So what that means is that the cosine of the angle, it's called theta, is equal to the adjacent side of a right triangle over the hypotenuse, right? So maybe in different languages, there's different mnemonics for this, but the, the rule is the same. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 28, right? That has to be the side opposite the right angle. Right, so that part doesn't oh, that never changes. We have a right triangle. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. Then the adjacent is going to be 11, because even though 28 is adjacent to the x, uh, it's the hypotenuse, so it's already covered. Right, so my adjacent side is 11. So the cosine of x, cosine of x, is the adjacent, which is 11, over the hypotenuse, which is 28, and that's it. Just put that in. That's the answer. There's no work to be done here. Now, if they ask for the sign and we needed to find what's, uh, we got what he have here is the opposite side, now we have to use Pythagorean theorem to get that, Pythagorean theorem, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but that also is not that hard either. So, you know, I don't, I don't really know what this question, this, this is about as basic as it gets, is what I said. So I stick, stand by that. The only thing that worries me, actually there's two things. One is maybe out of habit, some of you are going to try to find the value of x and think that that's what they're asking for. But on your calculator, you really, really should not be using the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, right? So either here, or if you go to Desmos, right? They're here. They're in the functions right at the top there, sine, cosine, tangent, right? So you really should not be using those buttons on the SAT. Maybe occasionally that's a way to do it. I've seen like one or two questions where maybe that's the that's an okay thing, but it's rare. So uh, if you're if you find yourself using those, you're probably going too far. So just be careful. So I'm worried that some people will actually find the angle just kind of out of habit using in this case would be cosine negative one or inside or inverse cosine. Um, so don't do that. Uh, you also don't want to do a cosine of 11 28. So that's a completely different thing. I don't even know if that's going to give you an answer. I'm not going to bother. Um, so that that bothers me. That that worries me. The other thing that worries me is less about trigonometry and more about the SAT. These free response, student produced response questions, right? The ones that are not multiple choice. They're very complicated rules for how you enter stuff in this box. And you should, in your practice, just one day, read those, right? So make sure you understand the rules because if you don't, you might think you're entering the correct answer, but the SAT might mark it wrong. And so here, this is particularly problematic because if we do, let's get rid of this button here, if we do 11 divided by 28 in a calculator, you see it's not a nice number, right? So th this, this requires you to understand how those rules work, right? So if you were to just truncate this, and put 0 0.39, right, round it to the hundredth, just because you're like, ah, it seems good enough, you're gonna get it wrong. You're gonna, they're gonna mark it wrong. So you have to follow the rules. Uh, I think, I think that if you wanted to put this in as a decimal, you, basically there are five places, five, yeah, I guess like characters that you can use. So that would in this case be point, is the decimal counts as one, three, nine, two, now what happens with that eight, right? So 0.3928 is an acceptable answer, right? So that would just be literally truncating and, and cutting it off at that fifth spot. Now I know it looks like four, but it's not, it's five because the decimal counts. Uh, or we could have rounded it, right? So 3929, right? Because the five right before the eight would round that up to a nine. So according to the answer key, both of those are acceptable. But my worry is this, what happens if we had put a zero in front of that decimal? Right now, is it three, nine, two is an answer? And three, nine, three, because maybe the eight rounds the two? So I genuinely don't know. If you put one of those uh, answers on your test, uh, please comment, tell me, did they mark this right? I'm curious where the tolerance is. I really don't know. And I think it's a big problem with these student produced response questions is 
the rules are weird. The rules are annoying. I don't think the SAT thinks it through well enough. I think these are just opportunities for students to get trapped by something that is not really, that shouldn't be part of the test, right? Just the rules of filling in a blank, that should not be something that costs you points. But it could, and that's why I want you to be really cautious of it and why I'm still talking about this stupid question. So I am curious, please comment if you got this wrong for any reason like this, like you put the wrong thing or you you rounded or incorrectly or something in this blank. But to me, the best way to avoid this problem is to put it in as a fraction, right? So 11 slash 28 is also five characters, right? The two ones, the slash, and the two and the eight. That's five characters, so that's okay. Uh, one other thing before I end here too, if you follow the rules of the student produced response, when we have negative answers, the negative really kind of like doesn't count as a character. So actually it goes up to six because now the negative is a character, but you still would have five other characters in this thing. If you're confused, yeah, this is dumb and confusing. This is a big mistake on the SAT's part. They, they should not make these rules this hard to understand. So please comment if you got anything wrong, if you fell victim to this student produced response nonsense. But uh, if that's still confusing to you, just like I said, read the instructions. But at the very least, I'm hoping that you now know the trigonometric functions that you need for the SAT. Basic SOHCAHTOA is all you need to memorize those. Remember, they're not given in the reference chart. So make sure you have those memorized because uh, you will need them probably once per SAT.